Yo, in this video I'm going to be talking about body language. I'm going to be talking about it off the rip a little bit. Um, I'm no expert on this. I only started learning about body language pretty recently actually. But I'll share with you what I have learned so far. So basically, when most people communicate, they only communicate at a very superficial level, which is in the content of the words that are exchanged. And on that same point, most people don't even actually have a real conversation. They're just talking at each other. They're not actually listening and they're not really listening to each other's points. They're not being present in the moment and these sorts of things. It's not really a conversation. They're just talking at each other. It's not actually a conversation. But anyways, body language is the sub-communications between the words of what people are saying. That's what they call reading between the lines. So, for example, if you are doing an interview for a position, because you're not just going to choose somebody for a position, let's say, for example, for hiring somebody to take over your company, right? So you have two people's credentials in front of you in the form of their resumes, CVs, cover letters, whatever, all that garbage. So you have those in front of you and uh, you're not, you're obviously not just going to make a decision based on that when you haven't even seen the people who are applying for the position. And the first thing to note, of course, is that people's appearance does make a difference. You can cry all you want. You can say, oh, oh people shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I totally disagree with that statement. I think you should judge a book by its cover because if the book says how to learn calculus, I'm no idiot. I'm going to assume it's filled with math. You can assume what you want. You cannot assume what you want. That's on you. But for me, I know if I see a book that says how to learn calculus, it's probably going to be about math. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can call me foolish for judging that book by its cover. And of course, that's an analogy to people in general. And sometimes you are wrong. Maybe you will find a book that says how to learn psychology and it's really about history. It happens, whatever, but most of the time you're going to be right. Anyways, so when these two people come in for a job interview, um, I'm stealing this example from Julian Blank, so I can't take credit for coming up with this example. I literally just stole this almost word for word. So uh, this one guy comes in for the interview and he looks really good on paper, right? And he's like, I'll handle your business. You can leave it to me. Yep. I'll take care of your business for you. No problem. When you're interviewing that guy, it's pretty obvious that he's not the right person for the job. <laughs> and the reason you know that is just because of the super poor body language. It's not the body language of somebody who's confident, etc. The vocal tonality is way off. Vocal tonality is important with regards to communication. Vocal tonality is how you are saying the words that you are saying. If somebody is speaking up at the end of their sentences, then that is an approval seeking behavior and it is pretty much always repelling to other people but if one person who is constantly seeking approval and validation from other people talks with another person who is constantly seeking attention and validation from other people then i think that those two people could definitely get along this is just my hypothesis but I know for me personally that I don't really enjoy spending time with people who talk like that, who, what do you call it? They increase their vocal tonality at the end of each sentence because it's an approval seeking behavior. And the reason why it's an approval seeking behavior is because 
when somebody talks like this, then you can't really get mad at what they're saying. Like you can't get mad at them. It's uh, self-protection, self-preservation trait or behavior. Because if somebody instead lowers their vocal tonality at the end of each sentence, then it's not a submissive tone of voice. It's the opposite, right? It's more of a dominant tone of voice. And of course, you don't have to go crazy with this stuff. Like, I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just sharing what I think, right? So take everything that I say with a grain of salt, particularly because, as I've previously mentioned, I've only started learning about this stuff recently. I'm definitely no expert on the subject. And it's something that I still have so much left to learn about. But um, I have learned a thing or two throughout my time living on Earth and socializing and learning about body language just in general. So then I'm going to go into some other factors. One of them is the body posture. When somebody's body is more open and relaxed then that's a dominant behavior as well versus if they're this is speaking general uh, general terms because there are exceptions to these things but generally if somebody's arms are like closer to their body and their like legs are close to their body etc like say they're sitting in a chair right and they're just like kind of like that versus like spreading out on the chair or whatever then uh, the person who's keeping their limbs close to their body is being more submissive and they're engaging in self-preservation behaviors. They have those fight or flight responses going on in their brain. So they have the anxiety of thinking, oh, what does he think of me? What does they think of me? Et cetera, et cetera. And the reason why their body posture becomes like that, and it is involuntary, is because by keeping their limbs like that, they're actually making it harder for potential attackers to hit their vital organs. Most of your vital organs are in your torso. You've got your heart, your lungs. You have a lot of important organs in your torso. So when somebody's keeping their arms close to to there when they're sitting for example then it decreases the chance that they're gonna get killed but like I was saying earlier there are exceptions because for example if it's cold and somebody is crossing their arms uh, they're doing that to warm themselves up right so you have to always read between the lines it's not black and white there's a lot of gray area and most of that comes with experience. Learning that stuff comes with experience. He, here's some interesting ones that I learned from reading a good book. I'll actually show you the book that I read right now. One second. What every body is saying by Joe Navarro. So, Joe Navarro goes into uh, specifics for body language. And one of the things that he said was that people, when they're touching their neck, that's a sign of insecurity, basically, or anxiety in general. Um, men will often do this by adjusting a tie if they're wearing a tie or like touching the back of the neck like th these can also be signs of insecurity women will often touch right here it's like this some kind of knot i forgot what it's called s it starts with an s i forgot what it's called but that's it's like right here i don't know why probably because it's actually i do know why 
I think. I could be wrong. I think it's because it's more socially acceptable for women to display emotions such as uncertainty, uh, anxiety, these sorts of things. But for men, they disguise it when they feel these types of emotions. So they might do something like, uh, you know, like adjust their collar. That's another one of the same type, where if somebody's feeling like uncomfortable, anxious, um, what was the other thing? Comfortable, anxious, or insecure, you might do that. Because what is it really? It's like, number one, it's a self-soothing behavior because you're like comforting yourself like you imagine if you're like a little baby right what do you do with a baby when it's crying you like rub it or whatever right you try to comfort it with uh it's the same thing in this sort of situation you're trying to comfort yourself basically with a soothing behavior whether you're adjusting your tie or whatever and then another one that's interesting is that uh genuine smile versus fake smile right with a genuine smile you'll have the creases at the top of the eyes whereas with a fake smile you will not have that like this right now is a fake smile you can see there's no activity by my eyes so it's a fake smile but anyways um i think i'll wrap this video up over here if you want to see more videos on this topic definitely let me know if you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe all that i'm out peace no, I'm too lazy to edit that.